Streams just look better with overlays. Let me show you a user-friendly way to get free overlays on OBS. So OBS is open. If yours doesn't look exactly like mine, then you know, maybe you've moved things around accidentally and you don't know what's going on. Remember, a very useful place to go to is docs and then reset docs. And that just puts the UI back to the default. If you don't see two screens here, then make sure you turn on studio mode. Okay. Now you should be starting from the same place as me. The first thing I'm going to do here is add my camera and then we'll move on to overlays. But first we need my camera. So video capture device. I'm actually using OBS as my camera. I have a few different OBS programs open right now to be able to do this video. So I'll choose OBS virtual camera and here's my camera. Now, what about overlays? So let's go right now to overlays dot uno. So you can just Google that and it's the first one at the top and you'll need to uh, sign up or log in. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. Okay, now I'm logged in and uh, this is what the website will look like for you. Let's just go to new overlay and we'll start building the overlays that we want to use. So the first thing I want is a timer. I remember years ago, I was looking for an OBS timer, just a simple countdown, just something that would count down to when my stream would start, or in my case, when my class would start, because I use this for teaching or presentations. Whereas I know a lot of you guys use it for streaming gaming and um, things like that. Now, a simple timer shouldn't be hard to find, right? Well, it turns out I had to go dig in and deep dive in into the OBS forums, which is a, I don't know, it seems like a bit of a weird place to look for something all streamers seem to have, right? So why did I have to do that? Well, maybe I could have used another program like Streamlabs or something, but it just starts getting a bit complicated as I looked into it. This makes it so easy. Let's uh, look at all the different types of uh, overlays we've got here. And why don't we add a timer? So there it is right there. Maybe we should zoom in a little just so we can see. Here's the timer. So now it's going to show me all of the available timers. Now, there are lots and lots of different categories and lots of uh, different uh, overlays and they are completely customizable. So if, if you like this one, but you don't like the blue, you can change that. Okay, I kind of like this one. Um, it looks a bit big. Hopefully I can make that a bit smaller, right? So let's click it and let's add to my overlays. All right, it's added. It appears in my overlays. Obviously it's not in OBS yet. If we take a look, nothing's here yet because we haven't connected it, but that comes later. Let's look for another one. So this is going to be in OBS somewhere later. Let's look for another one. So we'll go to new overlay here. This time I want a talking point. Now these are really, really cool if you have some kind of structure to your stream. Uh, for me, for my classes, I teach English uh, to big groups. It's good to have a bit of an agenda or a bit of a, an objectives um, visual that we can go through. So the one that I like is, I kind of like this one. You can see it's it's got all of these uh, animations, right? These overlays are not just pictures over the top of your stream. They're animated and they're very controllable and editable, customizable. So let's add this one. By the way, before we go any further, you can change the look of your overlays in your panel here uh, by choosing the menu. I prefer this kind of hamburger look. It's not really a hamburger look, but this list look rather than a grid look. Um, anyway, let's look for another one. One that I thought was really cool was a scoreboard. 
Now, obviously, these are very sports related, but you can use them um, with your chat in Twitch, you know, have uh, two of your moderators go against each other or um, half of the chat against the other half of the chat, right? You can really customize it. So I like this one here. I'm going to grab that and uh, add it to my overlays. I'm going to grab another timer, one that looks like it's a bit more... Um, in the corner. Ah, this one. I love this one because it actually counts down and the color changes in segments as it counts down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to see it. So let's add this to the overlays as well. Okay. All right. Now I've got four. Before we add them to OBS, let me show you how to edit them in the browser. To edit these overlays, all we have to do is just click open and it will take you to the control panel. Okay, it's got a little tutorial here. Now, I can uh, add the minutes, maybe it's gonna be five minutes and zero seconds, okay? Let's change it to five minutes. It's ticking down as I'm trying to edit it, so I'll pause it, reset, set it back to five minutes. And you'll see, yeah, see the color changing? It's a little hard to see, let's drag it down. You can see the color changing there as it's counting down. I really like that. See, the cool thing with a lot of these overlays is, is that they've got really smart animations. So when it gets to the end, it could say something like, let's start the class. But if we go to customize, we can change the going live in text here as well. Maybe class starting in. Okay, looks a bit squashed, but that's okay. Uh, we can change the color of the text if we wanted to. Uh, it's gonna start to look a bit, you know, not very nice there, but if you've got a color scheme that you have to follow, then uh, you can do that. I'm just gonna keep it white. Change the part on the outside. You know, you can see how customizable these colors are. Change the opacity of, of the outside part. Um, I'm just going to keep it red. It looks nice. Uh, you can change the background image, um, or you can just uh, turn it off. In my case, I'm just going to turn it off and also turn off the background color. So this should be uh, transparent now. So it would look nice on the stream. Okay. So you've got your controls for the actual plugin, the customize tab to edit the color. Um, and other things, um, and then settings, which, you know, you, you might not want to play around too much with these. It's just uh, the settings of uh, the visuals of how you see this control area, right? Okay, you can have all three of these panels open if you want to. Might be useful. All right, so that's our timer done. Uh, let's close this now. That's uh, finished. And let's uh, edit this scoreboard. So I'll open it, I'll skip this little tutorial, let's drag this down. Now you see a lot more options here. It's because there are a lot more functions going on with this scoreboard. Now maybe in my class, I've just got red versus blue, not clue, blue. Um, and obviously we don't want any flags. So I'll go to customize um, and there's an image here. So rather than download an image or upload an image here, I can just look for a um, URL. So I'm just gonna look for a, a red square icon. This one, I guess this one will do. It's just a red square. I'm gonna open the image in a new tab so I can get a URL. Um, blue square image. This one, I guess. It doesn't really matter about that resolution. It's just a square. So now I've got two URLs. Um, Hopefully this will work. So we'll copy the first URL for the blue square and we'll put it where blue should be. And then we'll copy the URL for the red square. And we'll put it where red should be. Okay. So now we've got red and blue teams. You know, you could probably uh, find lots of different images to match whatever you want it to be and they'll work. You just can play around with that and see what works for you. But I've got my mind set up, red and blue. So for this particular one, um, you can change the scores and you'll see there's an animation that goes along with that. 
Uh, but you don't want to change the scores without having these nice little dots. So red got a question right, that's a hit. Next one is team two attempts one. That's blue team miss, and then red team miss. Right, so you can kind of do this game in real time and then update the scores. So that's one one so far, right? So uh, very, very cool. Uh, being able to edit them uh, in the browser is cool and it's fun, but it's not the best way. Let's take a look at how we can put these into OBS. I mean the control panels themselves. Before we look at how we can edit them in other ways, let's get them into OBS. That's the next step. So let's start with the timer. Um, all we need to do is open it and copy the first link, the output URL. Okay, the output URL. So we'll copy that and then we'll go to OBS just here. Minimize this. And then we're going to go to add a source. It's a browser source. And I'm going to call this timer and click OK. Now, copy in the URL and click OK. And here is our timer. Obviously, it looks a little small. Uh, why don't we set it off so we can see how much room we've got? Let's give ourselves a minute there. Still a little small, so let's make it a bit bigger there. And then hold Alt to crop. If you want to do that, you don't really have to. But there we go, I'm holding Alt to crop. Um, and then as that counts down, let's uh, just pause, put it to uh, 10 seconds. It would be nice to be able to um, enter the time without having to click. That's one change I'd like. But let's let it count down from 10 and see what it will look like once it's finished. OK, not bad. So this might work better as, you know, if you hide your camera, you have a background um, and it's just in the middle like that. Yeah, you know, that might work a lot better. So let's just put it where it was for now. Um, and we'll set it off on a long time just so we can see it. Um, and that's how you add it. So let's do it to the other ones. We'll close this and we'll close this. And let's go to talking points, which we haven't edited yet, but we'll find a new way to edit it in a second. You can just copy the output here if you want without having to open it. Again, add a source, a browser source, and we can call this uh, agenda. Copy in the URL. Click OK. All right, here is my agenda. Again, I'm going to have to maybe crop by holding Alt and dragging the sides. OK, now I'm no professional when it comes up to uh, design and, you know, setting up a, an amazing looking stream. That's where, you know, your creativity comes into play. Um, but you can see that it's starting to look a little eye catching in terms of the production quality, the production value. We've got this here. I obviously want to change this. And uh, I also don't want to be um, having to open the website just to control it. So you can control, you know, going to the next parts like that, which will change in real time on OBS. But I don't want to have to do this. So let's look at how we can put these and the control panels into OBS itself. So the first thing we need to do is go to the actual overlay and then we're going to copy the control URL, which is this little place symbol. Be careful. You don't want to copy the UNO token and you don't want to copy the output URL. Not for this part. This is copy the control URL. We're going to add a control panel for this plugin or for this overlay into OBS so that it's part of the user interface, the UI. So we'll click that. It copied successfully. And then we're going to go to Docs, 
if your docks are locked, you are going to need to unlock them. So there shouldn't be a tick here. And then we're going to go to custom browser docks. Here, I'm going to type, what was it? The agenda control. So just, just agenda and copy in the URL. Now, it's added a little um, pop-out. It's a, a pop-out. I can just drag and drop that into OBS. Obviously, that's not a great place to have it. Um, because I don't use my audio mixer much, I might just drag it onto the audio mixer. So I'll close this. So now it's a, a tap. Okay. Let's have a bit more room here. This doesn't need to be that big. Uh, this scene transition thing, um, I don't really need that. So I can go to docs and take off scene transitions. Okay. There we go. So now I can control this overlay from OBS. So I don't even need to have the browser open. Everything is running kind of on its own. All right, so uh, let's say um, the topic will be objectives. Did I spell that right? Yep, objectives. Okay, and you'll see it changes in real time. Maybe the first objective is grammar and then vocabulary and then a review, okay? It's a simple class. And then I'll delete those two and they'll actually uh, remove that bottom part. Not all of them do that, but this one does. Make it a bit bigger now. Transition that over. Good. <clears throat> so now I can control it here. Today we're going to talk about grammar and then we're going to look at some vocabulary. After that, we're going to do a review. Okay. And then once we're, once we're done, you can uh, make it disappear like that. Um, let's add the timer in here as well. So we're just going to do the same process. Uh, let's open up our overlays. We'll close that. This is our overlays panel. Um, we'll go to open here. We don't want to copy this one because this is the uh, output. We want the control. So here's the control URL. Let's minimize this now. Docs, custom browser docs. Now, make sure you don't put it here because this is going to overwrite. Put it below. Timer. There we go. Apply. And I'm going to put it on this tab. I'll skip that. I'm going to put it on the same tab so that now I've got a little overlay, you know, set of tabs going on and my audio mixer. But I don't really need to come here much. So there we go. It's starting to look um, quite easy to control, you know, like a little control station. So what we can do here is make sure we are on the timer and we can do everything. We can turn the timer off. Uh, we can make the timer longer, you know, change the time. Oh, looks like the hours isn't quite showing up for that one. Okay, it's working. Let's pause and reset. What if we add an hour reset and play? Mm, okay, so if you need it to be longer than an hour, it looks like it wouldn't work. Although, why don't we see what happens if we put one hour and let's go up maybe three seconds. What will happen? Maybe it will just count down. Right, okay. So it, it doesn't visualize the hours for you. But... Do you really need it to be longer than an hour? There might be some other uh, timers available for you that will show the hour, and there might be a way to maybe customize it to make it work better. I might just not know the uh, the ins and outs of this particular overlay. Um, but yeah, there we go. And we've got the same settings. So we could have all three panels for the timer here. We could have all three panels for the agenda here. So you've got total, total control. Now, there is... One more way to control all of this, uh, and I have to say, it's really cool.
So I've played around with this a lot by now, um, and you can see the UI has changed. Just to reset, um, let's get it back to normal. Be careful when doing that. You will lose all of your kind of um, customization. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to control this timer and these objectives and any other overlays that I've got on my stream. I want to control them on my phone. So how do we do that? Let's open it up again. This time, uh, maybe we'll go to the timer. So what we can do is choose one of the overlays. Let's choose the talking points one. Open it. And then when you hover over copy control URL, you don't want to do copy output URL if you want to control it from your phone. You want to do copy control URL. When you hover over that, you'll see a QR code appears. So if I just um, open my camera on my phone, and if I scan that QR code, and open the link, you'll see that I have access to these controls right here, okay? So um, let's just minimize this, and here's OBS. I'm on my phone right now, and why don't we go to settings, um, or talking points, here we are. So turn it off, and away it goes. Turn it on, comes back. Maybe we're on point one, so I can move forward like that, just using the phone. We can also edit, so maybe we'll change the title now to um, contents. Okay. Tap off, we'll close that. Click to the next one, it, there we go, it should update. So you need to click to the next one, or click somewhere else for it to update. So we'll do Point one, point two, and then maybe a Q. Where's the and? <laughs> and A. Great. Um, and then a final thing, um, the joke of the day. Okay, click off, and that should all update. And you can just go to them as you want. Really useful. Now this time is annoying me, so why don't I control that from my phone? So we'll close this, open the timer. Okay, I'm gonna have to get my camera out again. Copy control URL, go to that, open it. And now I've got uh, a couple of tabs, you know, on my phone that I can switch between. So here, why don't we uh, pause, reset, and we don't want it to be an hour anymore, we just want it to be five minutes, okay? Sorry, if I open OBS, you'll see it's updating in real time as I control it with my phone. Now, this should be useful for a lot of people who have really complicated streams set up. Maybe they've got even more machines involved, you know, not just one computer, but another one, or um, they've got something happening in a different room, and they need to be able to control the overlays without being in that room, you know, super, super useful. Okay, let's check. It works. And as always, you know, you can get all three screens if you want, but uh, that's a bit, it's a bit squashed up for me. So that's how you can control it on your phone. In the future, we might look at some more uh, complicated and more advanced features with Overlays.uno, because this isn't everything. Overlays.uno has a lot more cool features and cooler features on the way. So uh, stay tuned. So that's Overlays.uno. If you found this video to be helpful for you, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe for more content like this. Streaming tips, software reviews, and anything you want, let me know what you want to see next. Cheers.